up everyone? It's me again. I'm here to actually talk about Tribes Ascent information this time. I put up a couple videos with gameplay, but I've never really described what this game's about and what it has to offer. First things first though, it's by High res Studios, who, uh, the last is... They did Global Agenda. I played this game, I enjoyed this game, but it's full of elitists and it's dying. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you know Global Agenda, then you know who High res is. If you don't, then you don't. That's all there is to it, but this is their latest installation, I suppose, and it is a free-to-play competitive shooter. Now, free-to-play means you can download it right now. I'll put a link in the description, click on it, big red play for free button, click that and you'll get started right away. But with the play, like, model that they have, it means that you have to gain experience in games to unlock weapons and classes, etc. Or you can buy them using their microtransaction systems. Now, it's not terrible, but it's a bit overpriced, their stuff right now, so it's probably just more worthwhile to get used to the initial classes and rank up and get experience. There's ranks in this game. Uh, it tries to pit you against similar ranked players so you don't get completely stomped. And like I said, you gain experience every match end, which will allow you to unlock weapons, unlock classes, upgrades, etc. Now, on the screen you see Blood Eagle Diamond Sword. These are the two tribes that you will most likely see in every type of game mode. They are the Warring Faction, the Blood Eagles, and the Diamond Sword. And I don't really know how they play in to most of the game types, because I normally just play Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag is very simple. There's a flag at each base, you go get the flag, you bring it back to yours, success. There is secondary objectives though, and this is probably the reason I like this game mode the most, is because there's more tactics than just that. There's a generator in each base which powers all the base defenses, the radar, as well as Doombringer shields, etc. So people can go take down those or defend those as well as take the enemy flag and defend their flags as well as just harass in the middle. There's bombardment classes that can go in mid and just wreak havoc on the other bases. Now I'm going to go in and start skiing around, but before I do that I will let you know these classes. The Pathfinder is a very quick, agile, he is going to be the one that you want taking your flag. He's supposed to go grab the flag, bring it back to your base, and be done with it. He's very squishy, so shouldn't really be put into battle all that much. So he is the flag capper. Sentinel, he is a defensive, mid-offensive character. He's very good at taking out enemy flag runners. He has a hit scan sniper rifle. Most of the weapons in this game are not hit scan, so he can use that hit scan sniper rifle to take out an enemy flag runner pretty easy if he's good with the sniper rifle as well as pick out light turrets or shields that the other classes on the other team might be placing around their flag. So it's always good that you can thin the defenses a little bit on their side as well as help and bring back your flag. Infiltrator, he is a cloak. He gets into the enemy base and he takes out the generator. He has grenades that does a ton of damage. It will rip a generator apart. So he is very proficient at that. but. Decent in a fight as well, even though he is light and kind of easy to kill. The soldier is a mid class. I forgot to mention these first three are light classes. These three are mid classes, and the last three are heavies. So up to the soldier, he is a mid class, good at harassing anyone in midfield, stopping people from getting to the base as quick as possible. You don't want all the the team like just rushing your base if you can stop a few of them it helps the raider is more of an offensive middle class he goes up he can take out the generator as well as harass the crap out of people around their base so not so much midfield but get to their base and start wrecking some havoc and that is my favorite of the mid classes the technician on the other hand is a very defensive class he can put down turrets as well as repair any destroyed uh, base defenses, as well as radar, he can repair shields that the Doombringer puts down, what have you. It's very helpful. 
The Juggernaut is a bombardment class. He fires a big green ball of death. This is my most hated class. Not because I hate playing it, because I hate facing it. They are annoying. They shoot. They don't really have to aim all too much. You get used to it pretty quick, but you just launch it. It has a huge radius. Radius. Hmm, that's kind of strange. Radius. Uh, it can almost insta-kill people. It can insta-kill lights. I think even if you're an unupgraded medium, it can un like it can insta-kill you as well. So he's very dangerous. He has the mortar which is the main insta-kill weapon, then he has a spin fuser for getting up close if people come up to him, as well as grenades that can do a hefty amount of damage as well. Doombringer is a defensive heavy class. You can put super heavy on him, he will stand on the flag, prevent people from grabbing it, he will, they will run into him and die. He will have shields down, where if enemies come in at high speed and hit, they will die. He has mines, he can put around the flag so if people come in at high speeds, they will die. He's very good at defense, and he has a chain gun that can rip people apart in close range. Or, if you're very proficient with it, long range as well. The Brute is more of an offensive heavy. Even though he's a heavy, he can't move very fast. If you can get to the enemy base, this can be a doomsday for them. They start with a heavy spin fuser, which does the most damage out of all the spin fusers, but it also shoots rather slowly and reloads rather slowly, but it is a powerhouse. You also get the rave grenades! That is the redeeming factor for me for the brute. You throw these, they pop up into the air, and they shoot little green lasers everywhere that destroy people. It is amazing. So I will choose the radar. It is probably my favorite class out of everything. You can modify it, you can choose whatever type of weapons, pack, armor, etc. that you want. This is one of the good features that they got. Each class, as I described, it doesn't have to necessarily play as I described it. You can play it in many different ways, and you can customize it to suit your very needs. Right, so the maps are, well, they're interesting. This I chose a team deathmatch map, so this is actually rather small. But the game is about speed. You hold down your ski button, as I'm doing right now, and you lose all friction. So you will basically just use hills to gain speed and move around the map very fast. Uh, this is exceptionally helpful, of course, for Pathfinders. You get a certain route and you just come in and grab a flag super fast, get out and move back to your base. Now this makes it very difficult to shoot people sometimes, because you have to be pretty good at leading your targets if you're doing this, right? Because your momentum also carries into your bullets or whatever you're firing, so it can mess up your aim a little bit, it's just something you gotta get used to. There's inventory stations here. These are actually something you can call down. Uh, if you notice up in the top right there's a credits. If you kill people, or capture a flag, or do any type of objective, you get credits. Those credits can then be used to either upgrade turrets, or defenses. You can upgrade everything around your base to level 4, which gives it increased health, etc or you can use it to call down certain things. You can call down a tactical strike, which it doesn't say, but I think it costs like 3,000 credits or 2,000 or something. And then supply drop, that one I think is 2,000. And it is basically one of these, but you can call it down wherever you want. And an orbital strike, which is basically a big, like, death from above type of thing. It actually let me call one in with zero credits. It kills people. That's what it does. So yeah, you can use your credits to do that or upgrade your base. Either or. Which is incredibly helpful. Now I didn't necessarily go over the game types. This is the TDM. Both teams start with 100 lives, you can see up at the top. And the first one to run out of lives loses. It's very simple. Uh, my favorite is capture the flag, which I described a little bit of. You go, you get the flag, you bring it back to your base, and both teams have a generator that powers their base defenses as well as their radar and stuff in their base. So it has two objectives. It's got the uh, main objective, which is capturing flags. That's how you win, as well as 
uh, aiding your team and screwing up the other team by taking out their generators or just defending yours and preventing them from doing the same. So that's why I like CTF way more than the other ones, but they also have bigger maps, which is always nice. Now there's also capture and hold. If you've played Battlefield, it's, it's like that. Imagine that all of these, except way to a lesser extent, like each of these inventory stations was a point. Let's just imagine that there was only four on the map though. And if you go to the point, you capture the point and you hold it to gain points for your team. I should stop calling them points, I should just call them locations. So you take the locations and it gets points for your team. The first one to reach 500 points, I believe, wins. So that one's actually rather simple, but it doesn't involve base versus base. It's more of uh, a large area that you just free roam from side to side trying to capture locations as you go. Now there's an arena mode, which is similar in size, I guess, to these TDM maps. Maybe smaller, way smaller. Uh, and they usually take place, I think most of them take place, in the air. So if you fall, imagine that this ship was an arena map, which it's very similar. Uh, arena map, that would be bigger than the ship, but you get my idea. But basically they'd be up in the air, and imagine that the rest of the map didn't exist. So if you fell off this ship, you'd die. So everybody would be fighting on these little areas, kind of like this. Uh, arenas, I suppose I can call it. And if you fall off, you die, and basically you just want to kill the enemy team until they run out of lives. Similar to this, except way, way fewer lives. And there's one last that I've never tried called Rabbit Mode, which I believe is there's a single flag on the map somewhere. Both teams are trying to cap the single flag and hold on to it. The longer you hold on to the flag, the more points you get which is basically just kind of like a moving king of the hill type of thing. You get the flag, you hold it, you get points, you win. And you try and prevent the enemy from doing it. So that's the uh, game modes and tribes to send here. Now, there's also a few other little tidbits you can do. Uh, more or less, you can also call in vehicles with the credits that I didn't mention. Uh, there's no vehicle stations in this map, so I won't be able to physically show you. But there's three vehicles that you can get. There's the grab cycle, which is a small kind of hover bike type of thing that moves around very fast across the map, but very easy to kill. There's a shrike, which is a very easy to kill, but airborne. And uh, it's, it's kind of like the Banshee from Halo. It literally is the Banshee from Halo and you can run into people with a thrust and road kill them in midair, so that's always cool. And the last one's a tank, the Beowulf. Which, as you can imagine, is a, a tank. It rolls around on the ground, it shoots big things that kill people. That's a tank, right? I think so, yeah. But uh, that's more or less uh, the gist of Tribes Ascend. It's free, I want to feel like I need to mention that again. So, you know, don't don't hesitate if you are looking into the game, just download it and play it. I mean, come on. It's free. Like I said, link in the description. Click that. Click the big red play for free button and you can get started right away. And since I put up gameplay videos, I feel like I should put up my loadouts that I'd normally be using that you'd normally be seeing. Oh, birds. That you'd normally be seeing when I'm playing. Now, currently I'm playing the Raider, so obviously. Uh, but of the three light classes, I tend to play Infiltrator, of the three medium I play Raider, and of the three uh, heavies I play Brute. The Brute's getting an update, so that'll be nice. So I'll go through those. The Infiltrator, he is the stealthy one. If I need to take out a generator, I'll most likely go with this or Raider. Now, the primary weapon, I've never really... I've un unlocked everything for everything. So the Rhino I've unlocked, he has three. It's a bullet-based weapon, a spin fuser based weapon, and then a three kind of grenade launcher type uh, remote detonation weapon. Now, normally I go with either the SMG or the Jackal. The Jackal's very good at uh, close quarters as well as if you need a little bit of extra boost taken down that generator, it'll do the job, especially with the minus 20 
damage versus armor there. Secondary weapon, I tried using the throwing knives, but it shoots real slow. So I actually go with the silence pistol most of the time. It's pretty nice, does a decent amount of damage, and you can shoot it way faster than the throwing knives. Belt item, I wouldn't go with anything other than the sticky nades. These are the staple to generator hater. Basically, this will destroy generators like nothing. They do, I believe, 3,000 damage to a generator, each one. So even versus a maximum rank uh, generator, I believe, four of these grenades will do it. For the pack, he only comes with a stealth pack, so I don't want really to take a look at that. Uh, armor, again, everything else. And the perks, I usually go with survivalist on all of my classes. Okay, that was kind of strange. <laughs> Survivalist gives you heal, energy, and yeah, and ammo from ammo drops. So picking up killing somebody and picking up the ammo drop will basically heal you, give you energy, as well as give you some ammo back. So it's incredibly nice, Survivalist. And uh, the primary, I go with Ultra Capacitor, which gives you 10 extra energy, even though I've looked into some other ones and it could be nice to go into like Safety Third. I have unlocked for an extra grenade as well as grenade radius, so that's also nice, especially for the fractals on the brute, which I'll get to. So that's it for the infill. The raider, I tend to go, oh, whoopsie. Let's try that again, modify, there we go. Plasma gun, it is awesome, it is my favorite gun. Uh, I Normally, it's because the arcs buster and the grenade launcher are grenade based weapons, so it's kind of hard to hit people in midair with them. The arcs is definitely easier than the grenade launcher, but still it's more of an, it works very good for indoors and versus uh, generators where the plasma gun isn't, but it can be very good in a firefight out in the open. The plasma gun, if you can aim it, is definitely worthwhile, although you do have to unlock it. Secondary weapon, I'm kind of torn between these two. This one doesn't have a scope, but it shoots way faster, but does little damage. This one does more damage, shoots slower, but has a scope. So it's nice for sometimes hitting those flag runners to try and get away. So I tend to go with it. This also, I don't know. Cluster grenades are very nice for generators if the generator is close to a wall and you get a grenade behind it. This will explode into multiple grenades and then all do damage, so it's like a big spike of damage to a generator. Whereas the whiteout does very little damage, but blinds enemies, so it's very good if you're fighting some enemies indoors. Throw this, blind them, and then take them out. Armor, don't really need to worry about, but they do have two packs. They have a shield pack where if you activate it, the damage will actually go to your shield or your energy without taking off health. So it's nice for basically just a little bit of extra protection but it drains your energy as you get hit and I like my energy being energy. So I go with the jammer pack which makes it harder for enemies to detect you and see you as well as can uncloak uh, infiltrators that come into your radius. So that's also quite handy. And survivalist ultra capacitor like I normally do on pretty much every class. And that's the raider. And the last one, brute. He's my favorite heavy class. He also looks amazing in Diamond Sword, by the way. Look at that, that's crazy. He has the Heavy Spin Fuser. That is his only weapon until this update. That's all you get is this Heavy Spin Fuser, and it shoots very slow, and yeah. I'll actually go on to this class right after this and show you how slow it is. Then this, like, why, why? An automatic shotgun, which it has very, very small range. Like, this is a piece of garbage. Why do they give this to you? And a Colt which is a hit scan, but it's more or less a pea shooter. It does very little damage actually, and it's not really worth it. It looks like a big stock and revolver, but it's like pew, pew, pew. It's crap, ugh. So they basically have no worthwhile secondary weapons and a single very limited uh, main weapon. But this, oh my God, they're fractals. They are beautiful, beautiful things. That is the redeeming quality. They are the rave grenade. They also get light stickies, which I think would be helpful against a uh, generator, but no. Fractal. Fractal. 
Uh, they get two packs. They get similar shield pack to the Raider, as well as an energy pack, which get, just straight up gives them extra energy, which is nice. Now, this I usually go with safety third, getting that extra grenade right there, as well as the radius and survivalist again, because I just really, really like survivalist. So I'll actually swap to this class right now. And I'll fire this off. That's how slow it fires. So if you're in a firefight and you're trying to kill somebody, they will shoot you like eight times before you get to shoot them twice. So yeah, that's the only main weapon you get. This, it looks, if you notice, there's a big circle on the screen, but the thing about this shotgun is It'll only hit an enemy if they are right on that dead center circle. That little dot in the middle. If you hit anywhere else, like if I'm aiming at the letter here, the O, right? And if, if that entire middle section was an enemy and I aim right there, it will not actually hit them. There will be no pellets that actually hit them. It's really strange. Even though it looks like it, it really doesn't. It hits that dead center mark more than anything. Especially at a medium range, so, ugh, bleh. And if you get past medium range, you can't hit them at all. So much garbage. That's actually a very nice looking sunset there. But yeah, the Brute, he's getting an update. He's gonna have a lot of crazy stuff. And it's probably gonna be... I, I might just swap to it from Raider, because he gets a plasma cannon. That's just like the plasma gun for the Raider, except bigger. Oh, you can't go into these places? Damn. I was going to show off how powerful these uh, fractal grenades are in close quarters, but basically, you've seen the rave grenades if you watch my videos. They're amazing. Anything caught in that radius gets thrown around and damaged to crap. It is just awesome. I love these things. And yeah, I'm probably not going to swap off those anytime soon. But yeah, that's some basic information on Tribes Ascend. Uh, I will say it again, there is a link in the description, click that, and just get started right away. It's free, why not do it? So I hope to see you all in the game very soon. See you guys later.